In the previous video lectures, we have covered some important terms and concepts related to cell division. I hope you have gone through those lectures. It is clear to us that before cell division a cell prepares itself. Two most important events of this preparation are the duplication of chromosomes and the duplication of centrosome. Keep in mind that we are illustrating cell division in animal cells. Suppose this is our cell at the end of interphase. It is ready to enter the M phase. Nucleus, the nuclear envelope is clearly visible. And one or more nucleolus is also visible. The two centrosomes are present at one side of the nucleus. Recall that these centrosomes will form the mitotic spindle for chromosomal sorting later in the process of nuclear division. As you can see, in this cell, chromosomes cannot be seen individually because they are uncondensed. But remember, chromosomes have already duplicated during S phase of interphase. Let's now study mitosis in detail. The name mitosis comes from the Greek word mitos, meaning thread. The term mitosis was coined by German biologist Walter Fleming in 1882. He observed chromosomes in the skin cells of salamander larvae as they were dividing. Mitosis is defined as a process of nuclear division in which replicated chromosomes are segregated or distributed into two nuclei. Suppose this is the original cell or parent cell having two chromosomes. After interphase, this cell has duplicated chromosomes. It undergoes mitosis and replicated chromosomes are distributed equally into two nuclei. Recall that mitosis is accompanied by cytokinesis, a process in which the dividing cell splits into two daughter cells. Thus, the two daughter cells are identical to each other and also to the parent cell. They contain the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Mitosis is a continuous process, but we study it as a set of five stages. Each stage is characterized by a particular series of events. The five stages of mitosis are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Let's study them one by one. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. Recall that chromosomes are invisible or indistinguishable during interphase. Prophase is characterized by two main events. First, in prophase, the chromosomes start condensing into individual chromosomes. Recall that chromosomes are already duplicated. Here, for our illustration, we are showing only four replicated chromosomes, that means total eight chromatids are there. But in humans, the somatic cell undergoing mitosis will have 46 replicated chromosomes, that means 92 chromatids. Also, note that, I have used two different colors to represent chromosomes. This indicates that two chromosomes have been inherited from mother and two from father. The second event that takes place is that, the two centrosomes present outside the nucleus, now start moving apart. As they move apart, assembly of spindle apparatus begins. The cytoskeleton of cell disassembles and microtubules of the spindle apparatus start assembling. Nucleolus also disappears. We know that mitotic spindle will segregate chromosomes later in mitosis. But for that to happen, contact must take place between mitotic spindle and the chromosomes. So, Next event that takes place is the breakdown of the nuclear envelope. With the breakdown of the nuclear envelope, next phase begins. This phase is known as prometaphase. The chromosomes are now even more condensed and sister chromatids attached at the centromere are clearly visible. The assembly of the mitotic spindle is also completed in this phase. Now, the microtubules from the two spindle poles invade the nuclear region and make contact with the chromosomes. 
the chromosomes that were scattered at the start of this phase are now forced by microtubules to the center of the cell. Recall that, microtubules get attached to the kinetal core of each sister chromatid at the centromere region. The kinetal core is a button-like structure present at the side of each sister chromatid of a chromosome. As a result of the association between chromosomes and microtubules, now one sister chromatid faces one pole of the cell and, the other faces the opposite pole. Once all chromosomes are aligned in the center of the cell, the third phase begins that is, metaphase. As we said, the alignment of the chromosomes in the center of the cell, marks the metaphase. All the chromosomes move toward an imaginary equator, halfway between the two opposite poles. This imaginary plane in the middle is known as, metaphase plate. Now, the sister chromatids of all the chromosomes are facing opposite poles. Metaphase chromosomes are the most condensed form of a eukaryotic chromosome. Therefore, metaphase is the best phase to count and, study the number and morphology of chromosomes. As we studied in the previous video lecture, the microtubules of metaphase cell can be divided into three groups. Astral microtubules Interpolar microtubules and kinetochore microtubules. Kinetochore microtubules connect the spindle poles with the kinetochores of sister chromatids. These kinetochore microtubules are required for the movement of the chromosomes toward the pole during next phase, the anaphase. We know that the sister chromatids of each chromosome are connected to each other at the centromere. Anaphase begins when this connection at the centromere breaks. Once separated, sister chromatids are free now. They are rapidly pulled towards opposite poles by kinetochore microtubules. Now, each separated sister chromatid is an individual chromosome. So, in anaphase we have now, eight daughter chromosomes. Another point to note is that, during chromosome movement in anaphase, centromere of each chromosome is towards the pole. And, the arms of the chromosome trails behind. Besides the movement of daughter chromosomes towards opposite poles, the two poles of the spindle are also pushed and pulled farther apart. When anaphase is complete, two complete sets of chromosomes are fully separated. Finally in telophase, the spindle apparatus disassembles and disappears. A nucleus and nuclear envelope reforms around each set of daughter chromosomes. The chromosomes uncoil and decondense. The nucleus also reappears. With telophase, mitosis is complete. A single nucleus is divided into two daughter nuclei. Finally, it is the process of cytokinesis that actually divides the cell into two. That's all in today's video lecture. In the next video lecture, we will study meiosis. Thank you for watching.